So, you have some new Ghostbusters for me? Yes, sir, I do. And the whole gang's back again. The original gang or the sequel? The reboot? Who are we talking about here? We got, you know, Ray, Venkman, Winston. <laughs> nice. Janine is back too, and Walter Peck. Wow. And Gary Gruberson, and Callie Spengler, and Trevor. Which one was Trevor? And of course, Phoebe Spengler's back, because she's like the new star, you know? Wow. Well, sounds like a stacked cast of characters. And Lucky and Podcast are there too, of course. Oh, okay. The library administrator from the first movie, he's got a cameo. It's probably enough. And we got some new characters to introduce, of course, like Nadine. I think you should probably stop now. And Lars, Lars Pinfield, new character. You gotta stop. And Melody the Ghost. Please stop. And Dr. Hubert Wardsky, but that's it. Hey, do you think that's such a large number of characters to put in this movie that it's gonna be impossible to give any of them any satisfying arc or growth? I do not think that, no. Okay, good. So tell me about this movie. I can't wait to see them bust ghosts. Oh, and bust ghosts they will, sir. Once at the beginning and once at the end. That doesn't seem like a lot. Well, sir, I kind of have a lot of characters to juggle. There's not really time for that stuff. But it's called Ghostbusters. It is, yeah, but you know, every character needs some screen time. And I got, <laughs> I got a lot of characters. But you put that many in there. I did, yeah. So at the beginning of the movie, the Spengler family is out on a ghost hunt in New York City, and they're after a flying ghost. Oh boy. And they try their proton packs, a remote-controlled trap, but they finally catch it with a drone. Why didn't they start with the flying thing against the flying ghost? So we can showcase the different merchandise people can buy in store. Smart. So anyway, then Walter Peck, who's now the mayor of the city, tells them that Phoebe can't be a Ghostbuster anymore. Why? Because uh, she's a minor. Right, I mean, I imagine the commute alone from New York City to the mines makes scheduling impossible. No, she's 15, so she can't bust ghosts till she's 18. That makes more sense. So because she's a sad teenager, she goes to the park to play chess by herself at night, which is a thing that parents let their teenage kids do in New York City. Sounds safe. And she's gonna meet this 16-year-old ghost named Melody, and they're gonna bond in kind of a romantic way, but not so overtly romantic that some people could get mad about it online. Sounds safe. Oh, and Trevor's gonna have this recurring thing where he's trying to catch Slimer, so that's gonna be fun. Does that relate to the plot at all? Not really, no, but we gotta give Trevor something to do in this thing. Or we could just cut him out completely, send the character off to college or something, reduce the number of characters in this thing? No. Okay. And another thing that's going on is that they're living at the fire station and the ghost containment unit's having problems. Uh, so what are they gonna do? Well, it turns out that Winston, who's been bankrolling them, also has been bankrolling a secret facility with secret employees developing new tech. Why would he not bring the actual Ghostbusters in on that? Because secrets are fun and they have this new thing to extract spirits from possessed objects. Why keep those teams separate from each other? Listen, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about Winston's secrets, okay? He likes secrets. Secrets are fun. I already told you that. All right, I guess I can get off of that thing. Secrets are pretty fun. And one day, this guy Nadine brings in this very scary possessed orb thing. Uh, scary balls are tight. Yeah, okay, and this guy unknowingly comes from a long line of fire masters, and they used to fight this demon that's trapped in this orb. Yeah, what's its deal? Well, it's called Garaka, and it freezes things. Cool. Yeah, and Garaka has this big plan to get out of the orb and make everything very cold. We're talking like Montreal in February cold. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so what's the evil plan? Well, turns out he enlisted the help of Melody the ghost to get Phoebe to kind of fall in love with her. What? So that she would then want to use the spirit extractor thing in Winston's lab to become a ghost for two minutes. What? So that he can then possess her as a spirit and make her body recite a chant that frees him from the orb. What? So that he can make things cold and spiky. Oh, that all sounds contrived and overly complicated and unlikely. Well, it happens. It says so right here. Oh, all right. So then everything freezes and thousands of spikes shoot out the ground. Wow, so hundreds of people must die. No. How? It doesn't and say that here. Whoa, close one. And inside the fire station, all the Ghostbusters got to prep to fight Garaka. Oh yeah? Yeah, everybody's gonna suit up, but Phoebe's gonna be like, I know that Garaka does not like brass, so I need to incorporate brass into my weapon. Well, that sounds like an impossible task at this point. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, she's gonna cut down one of the brass fire poles, melt it down, dip her weapon in it, all in the time it takes the others to zip up their outfits. Oh wow, she is lightning fast. They don't call her Speedy Phoebe for nothing. Oh, do they call her that for fun? No, they don't. For nothing. Oh, right. That is what you just said. So also, Nadim needs to figure out how to use his powers, but he can barely manipulate the flame from a candle. Yikes, how's he gonna manage that? By being off screen for a little bit and then popping out having mastered his powers. That always works. So then they all save the day, and when they come out of the fire station, everybody's cheering for them. How'd they know what was happening inside? Unclear. And so what do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like a nice farewell to the Ghostbusters franchise, you know? A farewell? Really? No, I'm just kidding. We can't let anything die ever. How else can we milk this IP?
Hi everybody, it's Ryan George here. Thanks for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and email this video to your grandparents. You might want to call them on the phone to make sure that they received it. Some older people have trouble with technology. It's not really their fault. Just get, call them if you can. All right, I'll see you uh, uh, next time.